Here with top15.com And we just want to welcome you to Thrive Nation We took the very best books And the very best names And we can dance them Minute episodes. Oh, I almost don't want to cut it off, Z. I just want to let him just sing and, and pontificate the, the glory of musical perfection right there. T.L. Odell, big shout out to you with a little custom acoustic Thrive15.com radio show intro. Z, that was, that was mind boggling. That was awesome. That falsetto. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, man. Man. Ooh. You know, uh, Ooh. Chup, you know, the, the last time when the elevator, we got stuck in that elevator together, mm-hmm. and I looked at you and I started singing in falsetto. Yeah. I both apologize for that, no, but I also no. um, I wanted to do it more. So maybe after the show, in between the commercial breaks, I'll do more falsetto. I will. I, I fully support that idea. When you purred like a cat, I knew I was on something. <laughs> <laughs> now we're moving on here. We're talking about the art of getting things done today on the Thrive Time Show. Wow. wow and, there we uh, go. <laughs> it's kind of the awkward edition. It's a little awkward in here. A little awkward hey, there. Z, Let's that? open the door in the studio, guys. Let's open that. How All about right. them bears? Yeah, so oh, bears. Move number 13. You want to be a lover and not a fighter when possible. Dr. Z, Joel Osteen, the acclaimed pastor, best-selling author, he says, every day we have plenty of opportunities to get angry, stressed, or offended. But what you're doing when you indulge these negative emotions is giving something outside yourself power over your happiness. You can choose to not let these little things upset you. Chup, or uh, Better Chup and Dr. Z. We'll start with you, Dr. Z. <laughs> Be a lover, not a fighter. What does that mean? That, that means exactly what it says. Be a lover, not a fighter. It, a lot of times people, something bad will happen, and they use this word, you should take this word out of your, out of your vocabulary, but they use this word uh, on principle. On principle. A lot of attorneys make a lot of money because someone walks in their office offended and they say the principle the principle of the thing the principle of the thing and they smile and they go oh i get to make my car payment this month yes because this dude's mad and that's what so what you do is you're what happens if you if you find yourself you know slinging mud right you're slinging mud you need to stop because you're digging a deeper hole you got to stop slinging that mud you got to somehow now chubb you have three scenarios you want to ask dr z about you are a business coach eric butter chubb i want you to ask dr z <laughs> these these scenarios you've thought about these you yes. have clients you've, you've helped navigate this what are the scenarios you've been marinating on over there all right so the first one is like let, let's say you've got a bigger competitor out there and they're kind of coming after you and, and you've got kind of a fight going with them what's the best way to you know bring that that lover mindset and not a fighter to that when you when you know they're big and it might not be the best idea to fight them well um yeah i might want more specifics from that what what uh, category company was that do you recall or do you do yeah you, it's you, auto, auto detailing company auto detailing so okay. got a bigger bigger you know kind of brand that that's uh, other parts the of the bell. state oh yeah other parts of the state they're one to, they're talking about maybe coming in and, and you know just shutting you down and and just getting kind of nasty with it and, and what is your advice on hey should i go back after him or, or should we take the lover route on this and well you got to understand that business 101 is war <laughs> and and that's why whenever you know earlier probably last month we broke down the six and then I give a bonus seventh book on books you should read if you're an entrepreneur and one of them was the Art of War by Shin Tzu which is like you know twenty five twenty four hundred years old right? it's so good and to the, read and the idea is is that when you start up a business you're going to have a fight on your hands now that's a different kind of fight than than so when when I have a detailing business someone calls me according to you. Uh, on this question, this scenario, right. and says, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm coming after you," and then you go, "Well, bring it on." Well, that's a normal fight. That's the fight you should be willing to get up every morning. If you're not willing to fight for your business in that regard, in other words, hey, out hustle them, out market them, out work them, out detail them, out whatever you need to do, out eat them, out, <laughs> out, <laughs> I will out eat anybody, I'll do it, I'll do it. I've been to CCs three times today. Come on now. <laughs> Uh, and the thing about it is you may say to yourself, well, I don't even know. I don't know the tools to do that. That's why we always recommend getting a business coach. We recommend getting a mentor you can bounce ideas off of. You can come to our workshops. You can get online to our business school. You can listen to the show as a podcast. You can, you, know, you can find some guys and gals out there that have been there and done it, i.e. mentorship, and help you with that. But that's, a normal, that's the normal grind of, of opening a business. Right. If you sit there and think, oh, I'm going to open this business, and all my competitors are going to give me my there's slice enough, of the pie. There's enough pie for everybody. And everybody's going to you know, cheer me on and come you know, bring me fresh baked cookies. Hey, Hello, thanks neighbor. For, 
Thanks for opening Thanks up for our, by. Yeah, our kind of business right down the road from us. And gosh, we sure hope you do well because, hey, you know. Dr. Z, I want to tell you what, man. I, uh, as, your, as your neighbor here at uh, Clay's Optometry and Associates, you know, what we're doing is we're doing a $98 special this <laughs> month to uh, commemorate your 99th special. And we're actually, been, yeah. Each uh, to celebrate your 26 years in business, every time that we we work with a customer, we're going to, you know, we're just going to come on by and give you a hug. You know what I'm saying, man? Because the pie is big enough for us, man, you know. Yeah. And so there is that in, in, that fight that comes with opening up a business. And so that's a natural fight. That's a good fight. That's what, that's one that you should do. And, and if anybody, if you don't have someone calling you on the phone, telling you that, then you just assume they're thinking that. Right. So if you open up a bakery, I promise you some other bakeries in town are going, how are we oh. going to take them down? We got to take now the next move. We're coming the next after move. your brownies. Chuck, the next scenario. What's the next scenario? The next scenario is getting into legal. Okay, so I've heard you guys talk about this before, but this is more of just kind of a general question as far as you know. Hey, like you were saying earlier, I'm maybe I'm going to get involved with a legal battle with this guy. Is it going to take six months? Is it going to take well, a year? I'm let me mad get, about it. Let what? me get into the three specifics that happen all the time because I want to get Z's take on this. It's just it's just the three. It's it's overall. It's like someone files unemployment. That's kind of a potentially litigious thing. Uh, a competitor makes a false claim about you. you know, that happens all the time. Or somebody's, you know, out there stealing your ideas. You know what I mean? You, you fired them. They moved on. They started a new company. They're competing with you. Those are, those are very common. It seems like every day in one of my companies, one of those scenarios is happening. Like a little fly flying around. There's always one of those kind of things. What is your thought legally to handling those kind of scenarios? Well, number one, unemployment, I never fight it. I let them get it. I, ah. always, I always like it when I've let someone go and they feel like they kind of got the last word on me. You know, and then, then they don't they don't have that grudge with them that can kind of release. They're kind of like, well, I got them for unemployment. They you know? don't defecate in your car as much. I, I don't th throw windows, I mean, rocks to the windows and all that kind of stuff. But the thing about it is, is that I have some friends, colleagues, other people I know that will sit there and spend hours trying to prove that they shouldn't get unemployment because they were trying to harm their business. And it's just a, it's a lot of time, a lot of effort. And I look at them and I go, they go, yeah, but if they get it, it's going to increase my rate a little bit. And then I'm going to have to pay more money. And I go, well, how much could you have made by focusing on more productive things? The time you spent in fighting that plus now, now all of a sudden you leave an even worse taste in that person's mouth. Now they're out there bad mouthing you on social media. Now they're out there causing you grief. They could be doing physical damage. I've had them do it before to my businesses and it's just it's just a mess. You know the thing, Z, that you could do if you if you didn't want to waste all that time filling out that unemployment paperwork, something that you could do that would be more productive. What's that? You could get out tweezers and you could cut your lawn with it. Well, there you go. Because that would be more productive. That would be more than productive. Fighting unemployment. Yeah, and the second one you talked about legal stuff. Now here's mm. the, the there's no joke. Whenever you get. The shakedown letter. You know what the shakedown letter the is? The shakedown right? yeah. letter. You guys, are you guys familiar with the shakedown yeah. letter? Why don't you go ahead and pay me some money up front, and then I'll go ahead and not file a charge. But if you don't pay me the, if you don't, if you don't pay me the money up front, I, I swear a horse head might end up in your bed, and I sue you. Yeah, exactly. The shakedown letter is the letter that comes that's not it's not a lawsuit, but it's the build up for a lawsuit. The threat. Shakedown. Shakedown. Go ahead and give it to me. Because I want some money. Shake down. I'm so offended and I want everything to change, but you know what? If you just give me some money, then all of a sudden my attitude changes about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine Shake that. Down. I mean, it's well, on go ahead and give it to me. It's on principle. <laughs> but you give me some money and you know what? I'll change my principles, you know, because that's what it really is about is a shakedown Do letter. You remember when Tom Brady or Tom Petty once said, A shakedown. <laughs> Go ahead and give it to me. He's fired up today. I'll shake You're... down. Ah, give it to me. Did, down, down, down. did you? Did Sorry. you get some brown sugar in your oatmeal this morning? A shake down. I'll go ahead and give. No, we got Vanessa's got to keep the cat. This sounds gonna have to. Yeah. The reason why I bring this up because it happens all the time. Everyone it, hates it that letter. All, it ha you hate the letter. You're going to get that letter if you have it. Maybe you won't. I hope and pray you don't. But if you, when you get it, don't panic. Don't whatever. You want to seek legal advice on it. And then you also want to understand it's just business. It's nothing personal. It's just a shakedown letter. People just want money. And if you're a successful business person and you have money, people are going to hate, 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 hate. They're going to want it. They're going to want it. And with, if, they, if they get some bad information about you or they think or they, they see that you've maybe you've done something wrong, they're going to they're, you know, give you this shakedown letter. If you know, hey, I'm going to the, I'm going to the, the, the channel, channel 6 News. I'm going, to the, I'm going to the Tulsa News. World newspaper, social media. Everybody's I, going to know I will go ahead potentially the thing that you did that you shouldn't have done unless you, you, unless you give me some money. Well, if I'll, I'll get on that helicopter and that guy does a, a traffic weather update. I'll be up there with a hanging a big old 
banner from down there and just saying that you, you know, I know what you did when you're 14, you know. Oh, yeah. You know. And it's always a, an employee that's just been terminated, typically. And then all of a sudden they, they think they know some things or they think they were me, offended or harassed uh, or, you uh, know, fill in the blank or uh, it was due to their age or their race on. or their their orientation or whatever. And they're going to, you know, they're going to go punch live you to now, the keyboard. You know? We're going to go live to the keyboard warrior now. Here we go. So uh, I'm on Facebook here. What should I type? Okay, so over at Dr. Zimmer and Associates, they actually hate kids because none of his uh, kids are actually little kids anymore. They're all adults, you see. <laughs> and the thing is that they don't like families because uh, typically a lot of the customers are individuals. And I know the secrets, so don't shop there. Signed, a customer, not an employee, never worked there at all. In fact, and I was fired. To, I mean, let go. I mean, I chose to move I on quit. for good yes. reasons. Yes. That's what they do, the keyboard warriors. Yeah, exactly. And so um, there's there's two levels. You get the shakedown letter, go to your attorneys, get a plan plan and go forward on it, but try not to, and I know this is easier said than done, try not to let it really get you aggrieved and upset because then you lose sleep, you get stressed, and it's not healthy for you. Turn that over to your team, your your legal team, and let them deal with it. Or the other one is a lawsuit that comes in. It may just come in firing hot with a lawsuit, and here again, you can't go, well, if I'm just nice to these people, it'll go away. No, you have to, you, you have to unfortunately go in and get a lawyer, and you have to have them then start the fight, And but here again... Here again in this, you need to make sure that you have a clear understanding with your attorney because this may sound a little, little rough. It sounds a little rough. But sometimes attorneys like it when you are really mad and you want to spend money in fighting over a legal Quit issue. Quit pulling off my scab. It just grew. Yeah. Sick freak. So a lot of times what you need to do is sit down with them and say, listen, I want to minimize my cost in this. And so I don't want to argue... I don't want to argue because a lot of times they'll say, okay, they want this. And you're like, well, I don't want to give them that. Well, then let's argue about it. Then eventually a judge says, well, give it to them. You know, you spend all this money in this argument phase. And so even in a lawsuit, you could still be tend to be more of the lover and not the fighter. But you need to follow what your attorneys say. But also you need to let them know you have, you know, you have realistic expectations of what it's going to cost. For instance, for instance, a good friend of mine had a car deal go bad and the car was less than twenty thousand dollars. And and the, the the person was suing them about the car deal. They right. couldn't they couldn't come to an agreement on how to unwind out of this car deal. And so his attorneys he ran up a he ran up a bill very quickly of seventy five thousand dollars. Seventy five thousand dollars. Isn't that crazy for a twenty thousand dollar car? Yeah, it was less than twenty thousand dollar car. Yeah. But we'll just we'll round it up and call it that. You know. And at some point you're kind of going. When does you lose control? You well, know, this, this is this is what the thing is. There's somebody who's out there listening to the show who listens to a lot of meatloaf. You know, it was a lot of meatloaf. Oh and, boy! You know that I would do anything for love, but I just won't do who that. You know, oh, yeah, going, oh, yeah, yeah. they won't do that. And then they go, well, if I if people know that I actually settled out of court, now everyone's gonna everyone a principal. Everyone, everyone's gonna now know. Can't and it's negotiate. gonna be a domino effect. Next thing you know, I'm known as a negotiator. I'm a settler. You can't negotiate with terrorists. I'll be, and then you're. Then you're starting to quote the Alamo, and then you're like, hey, do you know they all died? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. move number 14. Move number 14. Oh, wait, wait. There's one other, whoa, there's one other scenario. Whoa. One other scenario you he's gave ju- me. He's jumping ahead. He's jumping ahead. Boom, boom. What was the third one? All right. The you third. Gave me, you, the legal. <laughs> Sorry, you gave guys. me unemployment. And, and then, then and then customer service. Right or wrong if there's a customer that's mad at you? How, you know, how do you show them love, and, and when, when is that right scenario? Well, you, here, here's how you do it. When your customer's mad at you, you've got to own it. You've got to listen to them, and you've got to agree with them. Because more times than not, 99 times out of 100, they're right. Okay, Every mm-hmm. now and then, you can catch that super crazy. I'm just being honest with you. Like in 26 years of being optometry, we've I can count on two hands. Actually, probably one hand, the number that we said, okay, they're really certified crazy. Well, I'll tell you right. what. When you we know, come back to the Thrive Time show, Dr. Zelda's going to teach us how to handle crazy customers, and he'll be teaching <laughs> a specific time of when it's appropriate to bend over and moon a customer. When it's time <laughs> just to show them your derriere like you don't care. It's the Thrive Time <laughs> show on your radio. Stay tuned to learn about oh. when to turn the other cheek. <laughs> it's the Thrive Time show. Live, local, broadcasting from the center of the universe, it's the Thrive Time Show. Do you feel good tonight? Yes, I do. Justin, it's the afternoon, though. Do you feel good tonight? I do, but it's the afternoon, my man. One time. Oh, give me two times. One, give me two times. Justin, give me two. Oh, something about the "Need oh, You God Tonight" remix right, by Ju- by Justin Timberlake that just makes me it makes me want to cry. It makes it makes me feel good. It makes me feel excited, and I, and I get so excited that I I am glad to be a Justin Timberlake customer. I go to the concerts. 
I'm excited. I love paying him money to watch him perform. But there's always one guy at the concert. We've all sat next to the guy at the concert. There's one guy at the concert who is like, you know, he's actually not very good. You know, actually, if you notice, his voice kind of wavers when he's dancing. By the way, the best dancer slash singer I've ever seen in live. He's just phenomenal. I would say the only only he's only been beaten by Justin uh, by a uh, Justin Bieber's first performance at the BOK. That was phenomenal. Second one, not so good. But there's always there's, you're next to a guy who's kind of the critic, and he's critiquing the concert the entire time. And, or you've been to a movie where the guy won't turn his phone off. It's a movie. They have all these announcements, super elaborate, 3D graphics. Z, turn off your phone. Please yeah. turn off your phone. Don't turn your phone on. Hey, for the for the pleasure of all of our guests, turn off your phone. Psst, shut up and turn off your phone. But he's got his phone on the entire time. Oh, yeah. Now, so the guy at the theater has to walk up and go, hey, buddy, could you turn that phone off? And you know your buddy. You have, you, you have a buddy. His name's uh, Likes to Fight Guy. We've all known that guy. He likes to fight. You know, if oh, we yeah. take this guy out, he's going to argue with somebody. So sure enough, they go, Psst, could you turn the phone off? Could you do that? And, whatever. and then he's like, uh, no, because I'm in the middle of a, a phone conversation on FaceTime. And so you now have that awkward tension knowing that he's with you, but you're kind of like, I don't know who he is. And so they have <laughs> to go ahead. down a chair. And so they have to escort him out of the theater. We've all seen this before. They escort him out of the theater, and now you got a hostile person. Go, is this how the company wants to treat their customers? I'll go on. And so this is America. It's a hostile situation now. It's a crazy person, okay? But you're friends with him, but long story short, he's a crazy person. Z, in those kinds of scenarios where you're the movie theater, and you have to escort out a le certified, legitimate, crazy person, how do you? What's the best way to handle it? And when should you be a lover? And when should you be a fighter? Uh, so am I the friend, or am I the am I the security guard at the, the movie theater? You are the security guard for the theater, okay? And this guy's been escorted out because you, he's breaking all the rules. And I happen to know this guy, and I know he's crazy too. So we we've all agreed he's crazy. How do you, as the movie theater attendant guy, handle a hostile terrorist customer? Well, that's a very good question. I've never worked at a movie theater, and. I typically, whenever we have a, a hostile person uh, on 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 our uh, facilities, now what we do is we call the police and we let the, the sheriff's department. We let them handle it. Um, they have their pro their procedures and their protocols how to do it. I would imagine if I was the security guard there, then I would hopefully try to be at least somewhat nice but firm to this person to where I don't end up in a physical, you know, like a, a Charles Oakley situation. Yeah, but I don't end up in like a physical, you know, hey, we're going MMA here in the hallway, you know. So, right. but you know, here again, sometimes if you're if you're in that role, you've been trained, you you've known what to do and sometimes those guys like a little MMA in the hallway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're kind of like they got the earpiece going to kind of push back a little bit. Come on. You know, I mean, all those little sheriff, you know, department deputies and whatnot. I mean, they, you know, they they don't they don't mind a little, you know, how's your father? You know what I mean? Little, <laughs> little, little, uh, little elbow from the top rope. Let's rodeo up, kids. You so know? you would invite. But I mean, I, 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 I would say yeah. But I mean, you want to be nice and polite and know that you're always being filmed, and know that you're always being taped, recorded, and so you know always, always keep that in the back of your mind these days because it will be shown and it will someone will see it. It will go viral. Uh, note to self: no more streaking at the Riverwalk. <laughs> down for a second. I got to. I mean, if you if you go through the day and you say to yourself, I'm being filmed and recorded right now at all times, which is almost impossible to do, by the way. But if you did, you might act a little different. If you said, you know what, everybody can see what I'm doing right this second, you, you might be a little different than what you are. Can I if go you don't on a quick that. rabbit trail about the Eye of Providence? The Eye of Providence. Wow. Yeah, the Eye of Providence on the dollar bill, there is oh, yeah. uh, the, top the, of the, the pyramid, there's temple. an eye. Yeah. And the idea behind the Eye of Providence is it was supposed to be a symbol showing that the rays of light, a.k.a. the rays of God, the rays of glory, are, are around the eye and that God is always watching. It was kind of a founding father's concept that we as a country were formed by divine providence and that the Eye of Providence is always watching, a.k.a. God is always watching. So they put it on things. Now people take it to mean the Illuminati or sign of the end times. You know, Back in the day, the rainbow meant that God wouldn't flood the earth. Now it means something different. And a lot of people freak out about that, but the idea, the concept that you would live believing that the eye is always watching is a pretty profound idea. And in our current society, you really are being watched all the time. So I would encourage you to always take the high road as kind of the capstone thought on that. And move number 14, the art of getting things done. You need to work via appointment only if possible. So I'm going to tee up a scenario I call Jack Answer. You call a plumber to hire the plumber to come do some work for your house. And he says, I'll be there between 8 and noon. So you're going, well, I have a job. And he goes, I know, but I'll be there between 8 and noon. So you 
take off work half day from 8 to noon to meet with a plumber. Well, the plumber shows up now at uh, 1.37. I said, so you already had to go back to work. And he sends you a text. Hey, sorry I'm running behind, but, you know, I ran behind. So could you come back? Now you have to take an entire vacation day. Your boss thinks you're yep. crazy because you're trying to fix a leak. Now, if you had the principle that you only work via appointment and you tell the plumber, hey, I have a job, so I need to have a specific time that you will be there. Uh, and if they don't work via appointment, you move on to another provider, you get your day back. But so many salespeople, sales professionals, business consultants, whatever, see, they're not working via appointment, so they're caught in a perpetual game of <laughs> phone tag. See, phone tag. Yeah, phone tag. And phone tag is an entire waste of time. And, and we've all been there. We've all done oh, that. Oh, I just missed you. Sorry, phone tag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the, thing, the thing about appointments are it forces you to keep a schedule. What? And the nice thing about having a schedule, we've talked about this, we've preached about this, we've, we've ranted about this, and that is if you've got a schedule and you fill it up, you get things done. What? Could you repeat that again? Because that was a profound little boom boom. If you have a schedule and you keep it and you get it filled up, then you get things done. You know, you look at your calendar, you look at your day for tomorrow and you go, I've got a 10 o'clock, I've got a 11 o'clock, I've got a lunch meeting, I've got a one and a two and then three and then i got an hour or two to wrap up what I need to wrap up and go uh, home. Okay, Whatever, you know what I mean. You are a man. I've seen you schedule time with family. I see you do it all the time. It's very normal to say, hey, I can't do it that time because I'm going out to lunch with my son. I see you do it consistently with your kids. Yeah. I also, though, have noticed you, you kind of, you're, you become the fountain of youth. Age 53, it seems like you're scheduling maybe what you're eating, what you're not eating. Are you, are you working out? Are you, is that on the schedule? What are you doing? What, what, yeah, give yeah. us the moves. Yeah, yeah. You got to eat right and you've got to exercise and you got to take care of yourself. You only get one body. What? I, I know. You only get one body. I mean, you could borrow body parts every now and then if you needed to. I wouldn't, bar- I wouldn't mind here, borrowing uh, uh, Chip's body. I mean. Know, butter Chip? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Still here. Whoa. Still here. Whoa. You, I'm <laughs> checking with Vanessa to see what you ate today. Sorry. You had something. Got you all kind I'm of sorry, froggy man. today. I just, like, I just I was reading a lot of blogs. He's <laughs> easy. <laughs> Late night. Well, Were you up again past nine? No, I was up past nine. Kind of loopy, doing a lot of day quill, you know, yeah. just kind of spend a lot of time in Hickey Creek. Are you back, are you back on the orange people. sauce again? <laughs> no. Are you back on the orange sauce? No, okay, so you want to work via appointment. If you're not working via appointment, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You got to, come on, quit quit being casual about your life. You only get one life, and if you can't manage your schedule, you can't manage your life. Time gotta, management is all about life management. I got, a question, I got a question on this point here. Now, uh, when you're working via appointment with, you know, in, in the business scenario, is it smart to schedule an end time to those appointments? Oh, when we come back, I want to. This is a this is a hot topic. How do you do? You schedule a start time for the lunch meeting, and do you schedule an end time, or do you just drift? And next thing you know, you're meeting for dinner with a customer. Next thing you know, you're spending the night camping out at the Olive Garden. Next thing you know, you're just getting unlimited soup and salad, and they cut you off because you've been there 24 hours. I mean, do you have an end time and a beginning time? What do you do? How do you work via appointment only? It's the Thrive Time Business Coach Radio Show. Stay tuned. Live, local, presenting the world's only business school without the BS. Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. That's incredible. That's a cre- that's an incredible performance. If you haven't if you haven't seen the live version of that song, it'll bl- blow your mind. It'll just blow blow your gourd. See, I see a lot of times when there's there's so many good musicians out there, so much good artists. There's so much just see, there's so much good in the world. And if you're not careful, you spend your whole day in the negativity and you don't get to enjoy the good stuff. If you're not good at managing your time. Isn't that a shame when you see that with people doing that? Yeah. You know, they they we talked about in yesterday's show, they they just stay offended. You know, they just, they just live in this world of offense. Uh. And and maybe it's something that happened three years ago or a year ago or six months ago or, oh, or, a, or that morning. Right. I have a hot one right now. I have a hot one. Here we coming, go. Coming in hot. The players, many of them are choosing not to stand. Maybe you listen and you're like, that's right, because they should be kneeling. Someone else says, that's right. They should be standing. Either way, don't let them take your joy. You can't control it. Move on. I mean, you just, if someone asks your opinion, share it, move on. I mean, unless you're going to go out there and pass a law and be in charge of the team and do what you want to do, it's great to have an opinion. It's great to, you know, be present in life and if people want to discuss it. But there's people who actually, I've met people who are actually upset in letting that situation dictate their mood. Like, 
letting that dictate what and it just it's it, see i mean you got to just move on you got to you got to be able to move on yeah and then you're upset and then people that you work with your friends your family your spouse your kids they all get they all get some of that they do they they all get it because when you're upset you it's hard to be kind and nice and forgiving and and all the things that we're supposed to be to make the day go by would you a guys little just better. pass the butter would you pass the butter just pa- i'm happy i'm a butter happy chuck. person just give me the butter crazy oh. Oh. So yeah, before, we, before we went to the break, we're talking about the, the art of getting things done, specifically move number 14, the move. It's working via appointment only. And Chup, you asked, you said as a business coach, what, what, was, your, what was the question? Uh, when you're setting appointments in the business world and, and things like that, do you set an end time to those appointments as well? Well, I, this would be my take, and I want to get Z's take on this. If you're there to marinate, as in like have a rich conversation I would advise not to do it, but I would have a bookend meeting. So like, hey, guys, let's meet up for cocktails at 5. And then you could stay from 5 to 6 to 7 or 5 to 5.30, 5 to 6. It's kind of a little more loose. You know, it's more casual, like a friend. But if it's during the middle of the workday, for the respect of your employees, your teammates, the customer, I would, you know, book it like, hey, let's let's do lunch from 12 to 1 or something like that. You just kind of say it casually. on, the, And that's how I would do it, Z, but I want to get your take on it. Ooh, it depends. Are you buying or are you selling? Ooh. Are you buying or are you selling, Shep? Buying. But- Butter, Chep? We're buying today. If, we're, if you're buying today, then I definitely put an end time on it. Okay. If I'm selling today, I don't want that end time on it. You want it to keep going. Just, hey, I, let's want, keep talking, I want to build baby. that rapport. That oh rap- rapport? Rapport? That rapport. I want to build, build rapport. Rapper, man. I want to make a friend out of you. I want to hang out. I want to, you know, talk about your life and your dreams and what's going on. I want to build that rapport. So I'm not going to put an end time on it. If you're, you know, if, if I'm, hey, I got the meeting finally. Now, if I'm buying, then I'll put that on there because I'm right. going like, how long? We, if, if I give you the meeting, how long do you need? I always ask, how long do you need? How long do you need? And then they say thirty minutes, fifteen minutes, you know, seven hours, seven hours and twenty three <laughs> minutes, seven hours and twenty three minutes. And then, and, so there may be some negotiations there to say, well, I need an hour of your time. You say, well, you can have fifteen minutes. Great. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Absolutely. Because yeah. I don't want to sit there and listen to them go on and on and on about why this copier is amazing. It's it can amazing. copy. It can fax. It can print. It can print. It can copy. It can fax. It can do it all. And it's Did like, I it can print. It can print. We'll beat any price. And it can make coffee. It's got a Keurig built right in it. Let's talk about it for three hours. For three hours. (laughs) Auto ship your sales. Unbelievable. So, so it depends on whether I'm buying and selling. To be that's honest deep. With you. I like so, that. Thank yeah. you. That, that, that actually. Oh, you went a lot. meta. See, you went meta. You went above. Did well. You know, the thrivers out there deserve the deeper thoughts. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. By Doctor (laughs) Zoner. If you dropped your car keys into lava, do you reach in to pick them up? Out. Super fast. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> <laughs> now, move number 15 in honor of Tim Tebow and the former NFL player he, was he. Create one email inbox. Now, see, this is this is something this is something I see. This is why when you're at work, you need to have a work email. I, I firmly believe that. But I see people at work using their personal email and then interchanging throughout the day. In my inbox, I'm into my personal, now I'm into my work, and they minimize it when you walk by. So as a boss, you know, you walk by and oh, it's yeah. like, oh, minimize. Minimize. So my advice would be that you just keep your one work email open at your one job. And if you want to have a personal one to email grandma, then have the one email at your personal house. I really hate the blending where you've got Two different emails you keep minimizing and opening at work. It just leads to bad things. It's a disingenuous idea. I hate that, Z. It drives me crazy, but I want to get your take on that. It drives you crazy, really? It's, well, this is the thing I don't like. I don't like when you walk by somebody yeah. and they minimize the screen, which lets you know either A, they're working on something you're not paying them to do, a.k.a. stealing company time, or B, something they don't want you to see that's that's also bad for the company. I mean, I don't... They're hiding things. Yeah, I like it where you go, hey, you know what? I've got one email address that I'm going to use during the workday, and that's what I have pulled up, and I'm not going to be minimizing. But this whole uh, digital world has created these all these ethical... Back in the day, if your wife or your husband wanted to reach you at work, they had to do what? Call the office. Call boop, the boop, office. Boop. And then the boss would go, hey, your wife's on the phone. Well, so many b- small business owners today tell their employees, hey, you bring your cell phone to work, no big deal. And if you go to like Disney, Disney World, you can't bring your cell phone into the retail shop. If you work for the retail shop, you cannot have a personal cell phone. A lot of businesses, I mean, uh, JetBlue, as an example, Southwest Airlines, all these companies are saying, hey, you cannot use your business phone or you can't use your personal phone while at work. You just can't because the distraction level's there. So I want to get your take on that. I mean, can you bring your phone 
Can, can an employee who works for you bring their personal cell phone onto the floor and check it routinely throughout the workday while working for one of your companies? No, it was funny the uh, other day I'm walking. A- absolutely not. We have lockers, and they can put a lock on it if they want. That's their that's their option. But we have lockers up at the break room, and they're supposed to leave their, their phones in, in the locker. Then when they have a break... When they're, you know, on their time, then they can check it and, and all the important things that they've got to find out. But what know, if there's an emergency? Facebook updates and whatnot. Well, then, if there's an emergency, they can call the office. Oh. We will answer the phone. Old and school. we will tell you about the, yes. Oh, landlines. Now, now then, you, you brought up an interesting point because I was walking in the hallway the other day. And, and I saw one of my employees right there in front of me pull out their phone and check something, put it back in their pocket. But they text it down low by the belt. So yeah, I saw like you it can't right in front see of me. Right there. Right in front oh. of me. And I looked at him and I said... I said, um, I said, I know, I know human nature. I know people are going to sneak their phones onto the floor and do it, but at least have the intelligence not to do it in front of me. Right. I mean, I mean right. Could you at least wait the six steps I needed to walk to get past you to do that? Could you at least Seriously? have the, 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 the tact? Yeah. Could you at least say, like, with all due respect first? Let, let me think you're following the rules. It's kind of I mean, like let this. Me have that little fantasy in my <laughs> mind that, oh, look, they're following the rules. Well, see, you know, at work, one of the things people like to do is they say, like, they like to say, you know, with all due respect. And then that gives them a license to do whatever. You would, to disrespect. Would, you would, you would, yeah, you would, you would say, I don't, no, no, I don't want to disrespect, but. But. You, you would have at least preferred that kind of a thing. Yeah, I'm like bare minimum. I mean, you know, I know you're going to sneak around and do it, but at least don't do it in front of me. I mean, <laughs> can I can I tell you a hilarious story? One of our clients uh, went to audit one of his offices in Colorado, and one of the employees, their screen faced a certain way. So when you walk into the room, you're facing the person, but you're seeing the back of their computer monitor. When you walk into the room, right, you're right. seeing the back of the monitor of the employee. Right. And so he pulls the person aside and says, "Hey, I need you to change the, the, your desk so I can see what you're working on." She goes. No, because then you could see what I'm working on. Like, and she just said it to him, and he had to go, no, no, that's not how it works. I appreciate the, the candor, but no. And it's like, well, with all due respect, I prefer for you not to see what I'm working on. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, stay tuned. It's the Thrive Time Show on that your just radio. Makes you, it just makes you wonder what she's working on. That's what I'm saying. She's working on like a nuclear device with a North Korean. Stay tuned. It's the Thrive Time Show on your radio. We're talking about the art of getting things done. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Scripps Radio and the Thrive Time Show proudly introduce to you today's main event. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a blue soccer jersey, featuring a logo from an unnamed international corporation. Get him, Sam! Weighing somewhere between 102 pounds and 170 pounds and three quarter ounces. Yes. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is a legendary birthplace of the sod farm tourist industry. Come on, Doc! His professional record includes owning an optometry clinic for over 13 million, 140,000 minutes. He's been part of growing eight multi-million dollar companies, and he's lent his on-air co-host over $100 arenas while forgetting to ever ask him for the money back. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the undefeated, except for those few times when he didn't lose a couple bouts, undisputed champion of the world, Dr. Robert Zona! <laughs> I'm going to have to make a few intros. I, I have a feeling I'm going to have to make just a few intros. You gotta fight fire with fire, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you what, Doctor Doctor Zellner. The one thing people don't understand is that uh, he is. Uh, I would say he's got that that fighter heart. You know, if you watch the movie Rocky, Rocky was, was a fighter. I mean, he he was willing to take on the best the best fighter. He fought the Russian, but he was also was a nice guy when you got to know the guy. And I think Z, we're talking today about the art of getting things done. Yep, and you have to be able to get things done. While also being a likable guy, it's kind of a balancing thing. Because some of these moves, when you hear some of the moves, you go, man, that move, that, that's kind of a, a tough move, you know? And so one of the moves that you do, I see you do it every day, is you determine the action items that will get done every day, no matter what. As an example, as a small business owner, I see many small business owners struggling to open the store on time. On a very basic level, struggling to open the store on time. Struggling to respond to the voicemails. Struggling to send everyone's checks to them on time. I mean, at a very fundamental level, you're listening to the show today, and you're having a hard time getting one of your three employees to just open the door to the business on time. 
I see this at a lot of small medical businesses where you're a doctor and you are struggling to get her or him to answer the phone and to actually open on time. Z, if someone's listening and that is their current paradigm, what advice do you have? Um, ha- have scheduled them to be there 30 minutes before you open. Okay. You schedule them. If you open at 9, that employee gets there at 8.30. So now you've got a 30-minute fudge zone in there. And that, that's whether they're late or not is at 8.30. And then that way you never have a customer walk up at 9 o'clock and pull on that handle and the door doesn't open. But here's what happens. Then they, they move it 30 minutes earlier, right? And then they prove, the person proves they just consistently cannot figure out how to be there on time. How would you handle it? So many people are like, well, we'll work with them. We'll take them to a, some kind of a trust fall. We're going to develop the power of why. I'm going to cram endless motivational books down their throat. We're going we're gonna to really figure out the problem. And they, they even start to turn and go, maybe I'm the fault. Maybe, maybe they don't want to be on to work on time because I'm not a good motivator. Well, here's one, what you got to do, one of two things. One, um, you're, as a general rule of thumb, you're typically not going to change people. Now, you can, you can play the old clock game with them, kind of like I have a brother. And if we want to do some, if we want to do dinner at 6 o'clock, yeah. and I want to eat with my brother at 6 o'clock, I tell him we're, we're meeting at 5.30. Well, that's or, the move. Or 5.45. It's the clock move. It's the clock move, right? So you, you've got the clock move to try to kind of trick them, which right. is a little childish, but, you know, it, sometimes it is, well, I'm not going to change my brother. Right. And it's just, it's the way that it is. It's so, the way that it is. So that you do that, and those that every now and then he may show up on time, he's like, where is everybody? Like, what? that's what it feels like to be early. Isn't this, isn't this really cool? Look at this. You know? Be there Friday for you the can, Sunday church, please. Um, or the other thing you can do if they are a rock star employee. I mean, they are, a when rocket. they're there, they are your number one, and they are just like whoa, liquid whoa, gold. Whoa, 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 Like whoa, liquid whoa. gold. Yeah. And you're sitting there going, oh my. They, they give them a different responsibility. You know, give them, a, give them the job or the job title to where being a few minutes late is not a deal breaker. I mean, being a few minutes late and not opening the door, not opening the business on time, that's a deal breaker. As an example, you saw Prince in concert, did you not? I sure did. Was Several he great? Times. Was he great? Oh, awesome. Okay, so Prince, typically the concert starts at 7.05, right? When, when, when was the last time you saw him? When, when was the last I saw time? him at, at the Rio there in Las Vegas when that, he was a resident um, entertainer there. And he rocked it. And he rocked it. it what was, was awesome. the number one song he played? Do you remember the song where you're like, dude, that song was better live than I remembered on the album. I mean, that thing, you just you just nailed that. Was there a certain song that jumped out to you? Well, you know, I've I seen the movie, and so there's a lot of the songs in there that I really love from his, his the movies back in the 80s. And my personal favorite's When Doves Cry. But I, you know, he probably oh, does wow. a really good job with Purple. He did a really good job, I think, with Purple Rain that night. Really drug it out. But he had so many number ones. He was like, I don't even think I can sing all my number ones. If I started right when he came out, he was like teasing about it, going, you know, if, if, even if I just sang on my number ones, this thing's going to go over, did over he, schedule. Did he start on time? No. Okay, so typically the concert starts at 7 at the Rio, and it starts at 7, and some guy, did the guy come out and perform first, or they just, just like... In, just, fact, in fact, we got our tickets, and we got our table, and we're sitting there, they said, there's a chance he may not even come out tonight. Really? There, there's a chance he may not even show, but he came out, it was so funny, he came out on stage, and he uh, and the crowd goes wild, but I guess not wild enough. And he got the mic and goes, "Y'all ain't ready for Prince." Drops it and walks off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's the craziest thing. Was he was were you, were you, was he like an hour behind? Yeah, hour two hours. Of course, they had the you know the band was playing. There was yeah. music going. Oh, yeah. So you know you were you were having a good time. But what I'm yet, saying you know. is like Carlton Pearson used to tell me this. He's one of the famous uh, televangelists. He used to say, "I'm not going to start my service until the crowd's in tune." And I'm like, "What?" And he's like. Until they're ready to go, I'm not going to get out there. Like, sometimes it's five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, whatever. And they had music playing, so you knew you weren't just showing up at the wrong place at the wrong time. Right, right. But he, uh, my point is, Prince was a superstar. Now, if a guy named Bernie gets his first gig at the Rio because Prince breaks an ankle, and all of a sudden you're like, uh, Bernie, well, you got this shot. And he's like, I got this shot. Bernie, you got this shot. Bernie, this is you can do this. Now, Bernie's never performed live, and he's you know pretty good on the guitar. Um, you're going to wait probably 30 seconds before you fire Bernie. Yeah, exactly. The, the other thing, too, is what's really funny about, about talking about casino performances is that they are like, they want them to start on time and end on time. They don't want them to go over, better chef, because they get want... Get back they out want, there to the want, slots. Yeah, they, <laughs> they got to pay for that thing. You got to get back out there on those machines, right? right? Start pushing buttons. Deek, 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 deek. So it's funny how, you know, but, but like you have an entertainer like him, it's kind of like, hey, you start when you want. You cannot show up. You can show up. You can da 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 you know, That's in his contract. Because there's a only superstar. one of you. Yeah. Right. So that's what I'm saying. If you have a superstar employee, then, you know, don't, don't make yourself crazy but by, put, by putting them in charge of opening the store on time because they're historically late. 
you know, you want somebody else to do that job. Now, the final, the final move I want to go over today is we're talking about the art of getting things done. Move number 17. Fire unhappy people and contractors. Z, unhappy people. The, 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 you know, the Eeyore. Okay. Okay, I suppose. I okay. They're just there's a negative cloud of doom over this person. Talk to me about when you know it's time to fire the unhappy person. That just seems mean. I mean, firing an unhappy person. It, it, it does seem mean. And you know, you said it earlier in the show today, Clay. And unfortunately, there's so many people out there that are not a thermostat. They are a thermometer. What does that mean? Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. And the people that are, the difference is the thermostat creates the environment. Yeah. In other words, you, the thermostat controls the temperature of the room. Thermost, uh, right? You're right, exactly. And the thermometer, it just kind of says. It just measures what the temperature is. So this is, a, this is an example. A thermometer salesperson comes in and goes, well, sales are down. You know, they're just down. And they just state, well, obviously. The economy's right. bad. The economy's down. But a ther- thermostat, you hire that person because they're a trendsetter. They come in and go, okay, your sales are low. I'm going to fix it. That's why I make more than everybody else. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. So it's the, if, you, if you're listening today and you find yourself not getting things done, You've got to listen to tomorrow's show because we're going to go through. We're going through all sixty-six moves in honor of roots, uh, in honor of Z sixty-six auto auction. We're going through all sixty-six moves over the next six shows, and so you don't want to miss out because I find that uh, so many people struggle to get things done. And be honest with yourself: if you struggle, if you find yourself running out of time, Z. You really want to tune into tomorrow's show, right? But you have a you have a negative employee, and they're letting they're being the thermos, they're being the thermometer, and they're letting all the negative things in their life. We all have negative things, folks, we all right. Do. We all have a reason to be upset. We all have reason to be offended. So if you have those people and they're around you, they affect the they affect everybody else around you, and you're going to put up with that as long as you want to. It's not healthy for your business. It's not good for your business. People can go through seasons of that, but if that is their if that's their Default. If that's how they are all the, (laughs) that's how they are all the time. (laughs) I'm telling you off. Your business is better off without them than with them. Now, Clay. Yes. We're here to help people. We are. Can you give a few ways we want to help people? Let me do this. I call it the four to one ratio. We have one website in four ways. One website. What's the website? It's thrivetimeshow.com. What's the website? It's thrivetimeshow.com. When you go to thrivetimeshow.com, you're going to find a buffet of tools for Moves, four tools that entrepreneurs can use. One is we have the world's best business school. It's just a dollar for the first month. Check it out. There's 19 every month after. Two, one-on-one business mentorship. You're struggling to find somebody who's crazy enough to meet you every week, to hold you accountable, and who can provide you with an entire team of graphic designers, photographers, videographers, search engine optimizers. Go to ThriveTimeShow.com and schedule your free consultation today. Three, one-on-one one-on-one may not, may, may not be enough for you. Maybe you need a workshop. We have in-person workshops. And move number four, the podcast. You don't want to miss out on the podcast. You miss you never miss part of the broadcast if you subscribe to the podcast. You can hear the shows in their entirety. My name is Clay Clark. That's Dr. Z. That's Eric Butterchup, the business coach. You've been listening to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. And as always, three, three two, two, one, boom! boom.